Hey everybody, this is going to be a fun lesson. Uh, we're going to actually do a decent amount of programming in Forth today. So um, before we get into that, I just wanted to show you this is a cool little website. Uh, Wiki.c2.com slash question mark Forth language. It's got some really good resources on Forth. Uh, some of them you can tell are maybe a little outdated. I wonder if this even works here. GeoCities website. Yeah, no doesn't work but uh, a lot of them do um, the starting forth is an awesome book by uh, Leo Brody who is 1981 so that's you know he's been with forth for a long time forth is actually an older language than C it's actually been around longer than C by like a year or two but um, but yeah that book wasn't that book was written in 81 um, and he wrote I think a couple other books um, color fourth, fourth in Java. Yeah, I don't know. You can just you can go here. This is a just a huge page with tons and tons of diff different kind of resources. That it's fun to check out, and it's an old school website. Those are always fun. So, uh, all right, let's look at playing around with some words in fourth. Uh, so so far, we know. Uh, we know we know a few words, right? We know plus, uh, we know minus, divide. Um, let me get into the terminal here. We know you know multiplication, that kind of thing. Um, we know how to define our own. We made borb, which isn't going to be in here right now because each time you get in and out of an instance, uh, if you don't have a file, a fourth file that you're pulling in, like you can, when you start up fourth, you can actually bring in your own file. Like I could say, g fourth. Um, Joe's lib dot fs or something and it'll it'll use that then whenever it opens my interpreter but since we don't have anything right now uh, got to define stuff still but, or you know each time so but uh, all right there's our word borb so that's in there now um, so one thing so I want to show you two kind of resources that are going to help out with your word usage I guess um, first of all, you can just Google, you know, what fourth word that does so and so or whatever that equates to this in C. Like if you can think of a word and or a function in C, that C standard library that you would want to use, typically it's going to have a, a word that's similar to that in fourth. Uh, this is the G fourth manual here, and they list all of the words in fourth in alphabetic, alphabetical order and. If you ever feel like looking through I don't know I mean there's tons of them it's, it's kind of pointless that they even listed it because who's gonna really look at this but maybe you'll just like skim through here and then think you know one day you'll think I need something that is in there I think it started with an E and and class or whatever you know but so just thought I'd show you that and then the other thing is when you've defined a word in fourth you can uh, you can look at the definition of it by just typing the keyword C or just the word C and then the word that you want to see the definition of and if I do that you can see our definition there so we can create another word um, hello that is a string let's try it okay so yeah so, and then we want to see hello, and it shows you your definition. So that's kind of nice to be able to go back, especially if you have some comments in there and you you can go back and you can see what the comment is like, okay, this is what it's taking off the stack. This is what it's putting on the stack. So that can be helpful. All right, so let's get out of here. I just want to clear the terminal off. Okay, start fresh. And uh, let's look at some words. So, First, I'm going to put some values on the stack. So now we have 257 on the stack. Uh, if you use the word dupe, that just duplicates whatever the top value is on the stack. It just puts in that takes that same value and duplicates it right on top of the stack. So now we have 2577. Do that again, we should have another 7. All right, then we can pop those off. So now we should just have 25 and 7 again now. Yeah. Uh, you can do um, similar to how I did the, the period. So the period, it takes the top value off the stack and then prints it to the terminal. 
If you want to just take the top value off the stack without printing it, you can just say drop. And now you'll see there's that five is no longer on the stack. Uh, here's an interesting one. So let's put the five and the seven back on the stack. So we got two, five, and seven again. And we can do swap. And that takes the uh, top two values and switches their location. So the, the, it'll be 275 now. Let me look at it. Yep, 275. Um, another one, and I, I don't want to get too that. I mean, there's tons of these. Any, any kind of manipulation like this that you would want to do, uh, you, you can find a word for it. But um, So I don't want to go into too many details. It's not like you're going to memorize each one of these anyway. But uh, another cool one is rotate. And that's going to take the top value, put it on the bottom, and then shift everything up. So, so it's gonna, it should be 5, 2, 7 now. Oh, I did it the other way around. Sorry. So the, the bottom one goes to the top and everything else goes back. So I was thinking clockwise. It's more like counterclockwise that it shifts everything. So, um, yeah. So like I said, there's a lot more uh, ways of manipulating the stack. Uh, pretty much anything you can think of. So, uh, if, you know, if you something you want to do, just Google it. Um, so, and then let's look at some words for just printing to the console, because that's always fun, right? Printing to the console. So, uh, that, as we know, just it removes the top value uh, from the stack, and then it uh, it from on that same line, it. On that same line where you wrote that word, it prints the value um, from the top of the stack. Um, and now, so if we look now, two shouldn't be on the stack anymore. So yeah, just five, seven and five. Um, emit is a good one. Let's put, so if we put uh, 72 on the stack, and if you do emit, so 72 is H in ASCII, I think, or it's, it's yeah, it's H. So if you do emit, it actually takes that number and converts it to an ASCII character. You can look up ASCII tables too. Um, get in to Brave again here. ASCII character. Just look up like ASCII character table or something. You don't even have to spell table right. Yeah, so you can look at the tables. Um, capital H is 72 in decimal format. So it just takes the you know that integer off the top of the stack and converts it. So and then it prints it out H. And I think it took it off too. Yeah, so the 72 is no longer on the stack. You can try see what five is. Nothing. Seven's nothing too. Okay. Um, so let's, uh, let's see. So we can do. Something like uh, and then <laughs> we could make a word out of this, but this is gonna be a little bit not quite right yet anyway. So here's where it printed it and it's hello, but it's spelled backwards because we uh we put this on the we put the H on the bottom of the stack, and so it's basically here's what it's doing. It puts all these on the stack. So 111's at the top, and then it's emitting 111, and then it emits 108, and then it emits 108. So it's O L L E H. Um, so we can do it if, if we put the emits right in between each one, so it emits right after, then it's going to be H E double hockey sticks. Oops. <laughs> so there, now we have hello in the right order. Uh, CR is a carriage return. So that prints a new line. Um, so if we do um, CR72 emit, um, CR1, CR8, emit, CR. Basically, it's going to say 
it's going to carriage return, and then it's going to uh, print H, then it's going to carriage return, and then a you know, new line, then it's going to print E, new line, print L. So there it is. And um, so that, uh, it'll actually output a string value. So whatever value you have uh, in between. So actually it's dot, and then you have to have a space, and then whatever value you want. And um, should, yeah, it just prints that out. So we can create a word. Um, I that should yeah you don't need a space on the second one all right so now if we do hi yeah we get hello world so uh, we could even tweak that a little bit hi and then do a character return and then say hello world just so it doesn't print it on the same line. Do that right now. There it is. Hello world. We can do a character return after too, so it doesn't put that okay on the same line, but you get the, you get the idea. So uh, there's let's put it all together. Just do I'm just gonna clear the screen here so we can get in fresh here. Uh, G4. So we're gonna make a word uh, in ASCII. Since we're talking about ASCII tables. We're going to do a carriage return, and then the ASCII character of this value is I'll explain this in a second here. Alright, so if we look at our word, it's defined, good. So here's what we have. We have a carriage return, so it's going to go to the next line. And then, oops, crap, did I do that wrong? Yeah. Let's try that again. In ASCII. Oh, wait, no. No, that's just in the definition. Okay. That's what. Oh, it's, it's an escape character. It's escaping that, so, okay. We're good, I think. So, we got a carriage return. And then we have print this string. And uh, this is actually part of the string. And then we're going to emit. So that's going to take whatever value is on top of the stack and convert it to ASCII. And then uh, we got print this string, which is just basically th that. So it's, you know, the letter is going to be in between um, single quotes. So let's do a uh, 72 in ASCII. So you see it's like an almost useful program. You can see what 72 is in ASCII. Makes sense, right? The ASCII character of this value is H. Let's try like just a random one. Uh, 142 in ASCII. Oh, that's an interesting one. It's a question mark with a, let's see what 42 is. Let's see. And we can just do, we can do it like this too if we want. You know how it works. Oh, 42 is an asterisk. That's pretty cool. Let's see what 43 is. Plus sign. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> so anyway, that's, uh, that's playing around with some words with fourth, uh, Basically, at this point, you know, you have a pretty pretty good foundation in fourth. That's how simple fourth is. Uh, we, we will go on. There's still, you know, a good amount that we'll cover. So, yeah, that's basically what you need to uh, get started in fourth. Uh, in the next video, we're going to cover um, conditional operators and conditional. We'll start getting into conditional logic, depending on the time and stuff. So, but, uh, yeah, that's where we're going with it. So, if, if you like it. Give a thumbs up, you know, subscribe if you want to keep watching them. Um, there will be more. Thanks for watching and see you guys later.